In this challenging moment, I want to take this opportunity to state clearly what will never change, and that is the unwavering commitment of the United States to the security and defense of Europe, to our transatlantic relationship, to our commitment to our common defense. Now, here in Warsaw, we haven't simply reaffirmed our enduring Article 5 obligations to our common security. We're moving forward with the most significant reinforcement of our collective defense any time since the Cold War. First, we're strengthening NATO's defense and deterrence posture, building on our European reassurance initiative, which has already increased readiness from the Baltics to the Black Sea. Our alliance will enhance our forward presence on our eastern flank. As I announced yesterday, the United States will be the lead nation here in Poland, deploying a battalion of American soldiers. The United Kingdom will take the lead in Estonia, Germany and Lithuania, and Canada in Latvia. This will mean some 4,000 additional NATO troops on a rotational basis in this region. NATO is increasing our support to Ukraine. At our meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Commission, we agreed on a new assistance package to improve alliance support for Ukrainian forces. Prime Minister Cameron, mm -hmm. President Roulon, Chancellor Merkel, Prime Minister Renzi, and I met with President Poroshenko, and we reaffirmed our strong support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, as well as the need to continue political and economic reforms. Thank you. I'm already getting applause. <laughs> I'm not even finished yet. And even as the NATO-Russia Council will meet in Brussels next week, our 28 nations are united in our view that there can be no business as usual with Russia until it fully implements its Minsk obligations.